After the overwhelming reaction to our first Tears of the Kingdom vs. Breath of the Wild music comparison, we'd like to present part 2. I do want to give a quick shout out to those of you who shared their thoughts, subscribed, and liked our first part. This video wouldn't have been made without your comments, so honestly, thank you so much. In this video, we'll go over several of the suggestions that you made in our last video and also clean up a few comparisons, like comparing a few more locations and overworld themes, as well as the most requested comparison, the boss battles in Tears of the Kingdom vs. Breath of the Wild's Attacking Divine Beast themes. Soon after this video's release, I'm also going to upload a video without my commentary, so if you just want to listen to each song for yourself, feel free to do so. As I mentioned in our first video, my four brothers and I, we love playing video games. We particularly enjoy the Zelda games and have played pretty much every single one. We have a running theory that you can't have a great game without an amazing soundtrack, and Zelda games have proved that to be true time and time again. Even some of the weakest Zelda games in terms of gameplay or critics reviews tend to avoid a scathing review because of their amazing soundtrack. You can see this all the time with Pokemon games as well. It's one of those things that can be a redeeming factor for a game, or be the reason why you never pick it up again. Honestly, the main reason why we made this channel was to compare games we played as kids to see how their graphics, gameplay, and especially how their music stack up after all these years. We've done a few reviews like this, like with Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup and Star Fox Adventures, just to name a few. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild showed us that the in-your-face approach to music isn't the only way to approach a great soundtrack. Having minimal music can actually be a great thing because it adds to the theme of the game. Tears of the Kingdom is all about exploration, exploring the depths, the sky, and the land. And because of that, the music tends to be a bit more grand compared to Breath of the Wild, as a few of you mentioned in the comments. Almost anime-like, similar to a Studio Ghibli film. I did a quick Google search and it turns out that Studio Ghibli tends to gravitate towards similar instruments that were used in Tears of the Kingdom, like piano, string instruments, and a few flutes. So it makes sense why a few of you thought that. In part 1 I organized each track into a tier list comparing Breath of the Wild to Tears of the Kingdom. This time I'll basically do the same thing, but instead of having it up on the screen the whole time, it'll be in the background. And I'll have a counter in the corner showing how each game is stacking up. To get us started, we're going to compare the Temple of Time themes. Because it's the Temple of Time from tens of thousands of years ago, the Tears of the Kingdom version fittingly sounds super ancient. The swelling of the saxophone is such a nice touch, and after a minute or so you can faintly hear the Ocarina of Time Temple of Time theme being played by the saxophone. Switching to the Temple of Time theme from Breath of the Wild, it does a perfect job at conveying that the world you remember from the 30-ish years of playing Zelda games isn't going to be the same. One side of the temple is in good shape, that's the side you see right off the bat, but the other side is in ruins. Kind of like this song. You get hints of the Temple of Time that you're familiar with, but it's missing most of the melody that we're used to, and it has random harmonies added in that you don't recognize. It's a beautiful way to start the game. I'm going to give this one to Breath of the Wild. Up next, I turned my attention to the stable themes. Because they're basically the exact same in both games, I decided to instead take a look at the different spins that each game takes on the stable theme. In Breath of the Wild, you have Cass's version for when he's next to a stable, and then in Tears of the Kingdom, you have the theme that plays when you reunite the roaming band called the Stable Trotters. There's actually a unique rendition that plays as you reunite each member in Tears of the Kingdom, but I'm going to compare the final version once you've reunited everyone. I feel like I'm going to get a lot of hate for this because I know there's a lot of love out there for Cass and his accordion, but I personally prefer the version from Tears of the Kingdom. In the moment, I wasn't a huge fan of how I had to take each member up to see a great fairy before I could upgrade my gear, because Breath of the Wild made it so easy, but I personally love the flute that Piper plays. If it wasn't for that, I feel like this probably would have gone to Breath of the Wild. But the harmonies between the different instruments sound incredible, so this one goes to Tears of the Kingdom. Up next, I'm going to compare the Sage themes versus the Champion themes. To start out, I'm going to look at Yunobo and Daruk's themes. These two themes are almost exact opposites of each other. It's pretty cool because Yunobo's theme it starts out really calm and peaceful with the flutes and wind instruments, and then the brass instruments come in, and then Daruk's basically flips that with the brass instruments and percussion, and then the beautiful piano starts and it exemplifies that he's a big softie, despite how tough he looks on the outside, where Yunobo's piece it fits someone who's finally confident in their abilities. Daruk's theme is also pretty solemn, partly because he believes that he's the one to blame for what happened with Calamity Ganon. Both of these are great, but I prefer the piano and Daruk's theme, so this goes to Breath of the Wild. Looking at the Zora themes now, between Mipha and Sidon, I'm glad they didn't just reuse his theme from Breath of the Wild. This one's more regal, more fitting for a king. And Breath of the Wild, Sidon's theme is really in your face, which also matched who he was in that game, 
but I like the changes that they made for Tears of the Kingdom. I'm a big fan of the harp at the beginning, and Sidon's theme actually borrows quite a bit from Mipha's. The melody of the first half is basically just Mipha's theme. I'd say that I personally prefer Sidon's theme because it takes the melody of Mipha's theme and adds a bit more to it. Also, while I've been editing this, it's the only theme out of all of these that I keep on humming when I'm away from my desk. I do want to say that you can almost hear the sorrow behind Mipha's theme, but for me it made it kind of hard to choose which is better between the two. Which one do you think is better? Leave a comment down below for which one you prefer. I'm going to give this one to Tears of the Kingdom. Now looking at Rivali's and Tulin's theme, first off I just have to say Ravioli is a jerk, but you can't not love his theme. He probably does the best out of all of the champions at incorporating the theme of the race into their theme. Without knowing that it's Rivali's theme, if you spent any time listening to the Rito Village theme, you'll know without a doubt that it's the song of a Rito warrior. With that said, I absolutely love Tulin's theme. Everything about it is amazing. The first half is almost like what would play at the beginning of a Pokemon game or the first episode of an anime, when the main character needs to leave their family to go on an epic adventure. And then as they're leaving, the second half of Tulin's theme plays as they're filled with determination to go on their unexpected journey. The jump from a slow ballad with the piano to a hopeful theme with the violins and accordion as a backdrop is awesome and sums up Tulin's journey as a sage perfectly. This goes to Tears of the Kingdom. Urbosa's theme perfectly exemplifies someone who would be the motherly figure that Zelda looks up to. It's calm and soft, but at the end, strong and collected. To me, there are even times in the piano where it almost sounds like the Halo theme. Take a listen. And while I think overall Riju's theme does a better job at incorporating the Middle Eastern vibe that matches the Gerudo culture better than Urbosa's, I'm a huge fan of Urbosa's theme, especially the ending. This one goes to Breath of the Wild. Next, I'm going to take a look at the battle themes. And before I do that, I want to first explain how they work in these games. It's not as easy as most games where you just compare one battle theme to the next, because honestly, there's a ton of sorcery that's happening behind the scenes for these. Because basically, the battle theme will change depending on the difficulty of the enemies that you're facing, the amount of enemies that you're fighting, and the location. The game gives you a rendition of the battle theme specific to your circumstances at that moment. So it might be in a slightly different key, or might add in a little extra bass when fighting a real tough enemy, or it might even be adding in additional instruments. It's all kind of complicated, but the YouTube channel Snoob did an excellent video showcasing all the different variations of the battle theme from Breath of the Wild, and then Mr. Oscilloscope. I hope I said that right, did the same thing for Tears of the Kingdom. I'll include both of those videos in the description, but unlike most open world games that maybe have a handful of battle themes depending on the particular enemy you're fighting, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom have that, plus maybe 30 or more renditions of the battle theme depending on your exact situation. Doom and Doom Eternal kind of do something similar depending on your exact situation, where the game's music will ramp up or kind of take a back seat depending on if you're in a really tense situation or if you're kind of trying to avoid enemies. With that explanation out of the way, here's a look at the generic battle music from Tears of the Kingdom. I really like how chaotic and untamed it sounds compared to Breath of the Wild. Like at the end it even has a bit of the Ganon theme to basically remind you where all these bad guys are coming from, but with that said, when the violins kick in about a minute into Breath of the Wild's theme, it gets me energized every single time. It doesn't matter if I'm fighting a Red Bokoblin at the beginning of the game or a pack of silver ones towards the end. It always fills me with determination to fight no matter how much health I have. They're both excellent, but I'm going to give this one to Breath of the Wild. So the next one is basically the Lionel theme. It also plays when you fight the Yiga clan, which is kind of interesting, but there's a touch of the Beast Ganon theme right at the beginning of Tears of the Kingdoms, which I really like, but not as much as the intro notes from Breath of the Wild. To me, those are almost nostalgic. If you're in the middle of a valley or a place you think is safe, but then all of a sudden that intro plays, it gives off same vibes as if you see a guardian. But then, the violins come soaring in around the 40 second mark, and it gives me the same sense of determination and hope as the typical battle theme does, and it's just as awesome. With that said, I'm going to actually give this one to Tears of the Kingdom because I prefer the flurry rush part of Tears of the Kingdom. The flute you hear is something I feel like you don't get too much in these games, especially being part of the battle theme, which really makes it stand out. It gives the battle a sense of desperation. Like if you don't beat this one Lionel, the world doesn't stand a chance. Now there is the Molduga theme, the Talus theme, and the Hinox theme. I listened to all of them, just kind of comparing both of them at the exact same time. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. 
Intel has told us there are at least seven. Okay, I already see one given. Okay. They're the same picture. And even the dragon theme is the same, but what I'm going to do is actually compare two dragon themes that are unique to each game. In Breath of the Wild, you have the Corrupted Dragon, and then in Tears of the Kingdom, you have the Light Dragon theme. But first off, I want to say that the Uryu is an amazing instrument. It doesn't matter if it's an avatar. We're covering a song that traditionally uses a violin. Or if it's in The Legend of Zelda, it always sounds incredible. Both of these unique dragon tracks couldn't fit more perfectly with what they're trying to convey. The Corrupted Dragon theme from Breath of the Wild tells the story of Nadra and how she was taken over by Malice. We don't know how long she's been like that, but the music does an excellent job at telling you that something is wrong without having an NPC standing at the base of the mountain saying, hey, this dragon's in pain and it's corrupted by Malice and you need to help it. As for the Light Dragon theme, at first listen it might sound like the typical dragon theme, but instead because of the Light Dragon's connection to the royal family, the typical melody of the dragon theme is replaced by Zelda's lullaby, except the few final notes are left out, almost like the dragon is trying to remember its connection to the royal family. I personally love the theme from Tears of the Kingdom. It's sad but hopeful, and it ties in the royal family connection perfectly. Now moving on to the final section, where I'm going to compare the boss battles of Tears of the Kingdom to the attacking Divine Beast themes in Breath of the Wild. I figured that it would most likely be a sweep by Tears of the Kingdom if I just compared the Tears of the Kingdom bosses to the Blights in Breath of the Wild, so I figured this would be a much better comparison. Starting out, I'm going to take a look at Varudanya versus the Marbled Goma. The final 20 seconds of the Goma fight is awesome, and it brings in the Ganondorf theme. It's also super fast paced throughout the entire battle, which I love, especially for a boss battle like this. You're in a tight space with nowhere to run, and you're forced to fight. The attack on Varudani is honestly probably the weakest attack on Divine Beast theme in Breath of the Wild. It basically just repeats the same 20 to 30 seconds over and over again and slightly builds a little bit of tension if a sentry is starting to look for you. Then it does it all over again. For a section that took me about 15 to 20 minutes to beat, it got old really fast. I will say it does match the theme of being close to a volcano and how you need to sneak by the sentries, but this one I'm going to give to Tears of the Kingdom for sure. Next I'm going to take a look at the Vonaboris versus Queen Gibdo themes. The Queen Gibdo theme ties in the Gerudo Town theme perfectly, and if you listen close and compare the two, they almost match up perfectly in certain spots. And to be honest, I'm still kind of freaked out by Queen Gibdo. But few songs can beat the epic beat that plays while you're shooting bomb arrows at a giant electric camel contraption while riding on top of a shield being pulled by a seal. From the amazing beat, to the incorporation of classic Middle Eastern instruments, to the meme potential, it's an amazing track and takes the cake in this comparison. Now looking at the Zora themes. I think the Varuda theme does the best out of all the Divine Beast battles at tying in the champion who controls it. To me it almost sounds like a song that Mifa would conduct herself. It also exemplifies the dire situation that you're in. The issue with Varuta was that it was basically going to flood the entire world if you didn't stop it. Even the Zoras who love water were worried about it. For Tears of the Kingdom, a comment that I saw in the Muktarok battle mentioned that it sounds more like a theme that fits the Zora situation more than the temple itself, and I 100% agree. But it's not necessarily because the boss battle itself, but rather what's at stake. Because I feel like the music needs to fit the battle that you're in, I'm going to give this one to Breath of the Wild, with the music fitting the battle better than Tears of the Kingdom. Lastly, we have Va Meadow versus Kolgera. Va Meadow is a great theme, and the additional violins are perfect for a theme when you're flying around the sky. It also adds the Rito theme in a few minutes into the theme, but I mean, come on, how are you supposed to compete with this? From the flute trills, to the trumpets, to the violins, to the throwback of Wind Waker's Mulduga battle, to the literal choir in the background, to the Rito Village theme that plays by the entire orchestra during the final act, this theme goes way harder than it needed to, but I'm all for it. People have already even remixed it and turned it into a Dark Souls boss battle. It's awesome. That leaves the final score at Breath of the Wild 6 versus Tears of the Kingdom 7. Both of these games stand out in terms of their gameplay, world building, and music. The additional mechanics behind the battle themes is the attention to detail that we'd expect from a Zelda game. The three composers of Breath of the Wild and the four leading composers of Tears of the Kingdom all did a remarkable job at combining the exploration theme that's present in both of these games and putting it to music. I can't wait to see what they do for the DLC for this game. And hey, if there's extra music added, be on the lookout for part three. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment down below and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.